Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. So today we're going to talk about 1.4, the brain. And we're going to understand how the structures and functions of that brain apply to behavior and mental processes. Okay, first thing we're going to look at is the key term page. So as you know, I make a separate video going through each of the key terms that you're going to need in this section. So you can uh, check that out um, after this video. Okay, so we're going to start with the first CED question or the only CED question for 1.4, and it is explain how the structures and functions of the brain apply to behavior and mental processes. So we're going to go through all the structures and functions and how that applies. So in AP Psychology Unit 1.4, the focus is on how the structures and functions of the brain relate to behavior and mental processes. The brain is a complex organ responsible for a wide range of functions, from basic survival mechanisms to higher cognitive processes and emotional regulation. Here's how different brain structures and their functions apply to behavior and mental processes. So I'm going to go through each of the parts of the brain and their function so that you can understand how they work and then how they apply to the behavior and mental processes. So on the first slide, we're going to start off with brainstem. So the function of the brainstem is, well, the brainstem is in the lower part of the brain and it connects to the spinal cord and it controls basic life functions such as breathing, heart rate, blood pressure. It includes the medulla, pons, and midbrain, and it is essential for survival. The second one we're going to look at is the medulla. The medulla is a part of the brainstem that controls vital automatic functions like breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure. It is crucial in keeping us alive. Very important. Retic reticular formation. The reticular formation is a network of neurons located in the brainstem that helps regulate sleep, alertness, and attention. It acts as a filter for incoming stimuli and plays a key role in arousal and consciousness. And the last one on this slide is pons. That's part of the brainstem that controls movement. Okay, we're going to keep going. So we're going to look at the thalamus. The thalamus is a brain structure located above the brainstem that acts as a relay station directing sensory information, except for smell, to the appropriate areas of the brain for processing. It plays a key role in regulating consciousness, sleep, and alertness. The next one we're going to look at is cerebellum. The cerebellum is a part of the brain located at the back of the head under the cerebrum, and it helps coordinate voluntary movements, balance, and posture, making sure that our actions are smooth and precise. The next one, basal ganglia. The basal ganglia are a group of structures located deep within the brain that help control movement, coordination, and posture. They play a key role in regulating voluntary motor activities and are involved in learning motor skills and habits. We continue. The limbic system. The limbic system is a group of brain structures involved in emotion, motivation, and memory. Key parts include the amygdala, which processes emotions like fear and pleasure, and the hippocampus, which is important for forming new memories. The hippocampus. The hippocampus is a part of the brain within the limbic system that is crucial for forming and storing new memories. It helps convert short-term memories into long-term ones, and it plays a role in spatial navigation. The amygdala. The amygdala is a part of the brain within the limbic system that is involved in processing emotions, especially fear and aggression. It helps us recognize and react to emotional stimuli. The hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is a small brain structure located below the thalamus, and it regulates vital body functions, functions such as hunger, thirst, body temperature, and the sleep-wake cycle. It also controls the release of hormones through its connection with the pituitary gland. Cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is the outer layer of the brain that is involved in higher cognitive functions, such as thinking, planning, language, and sensory perception. It's what gives the brain its wrinkled appearance and is divided into two hemispheres, each with four lobes, frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital. Glial cells. The glial cells are supportive cells in the nervous system that provide structural support, insulation, and nutrients to the neurons. And remember, we talked all about neurons in 1.3. They also help remove debris, regulate the flow of nutrients and chemicals, and play a role in the formation of, of myelin. 
which insulates nerve fibers and enhances the speed of electrical transmissions in the brain. And we talked all about that in 1.3. We're gonna look at the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is a part of the brain located behind the forehead. It's involved in higher cognitive functions, such as decision-making, planning, problem solving, and controlling emotions. It also houses the motor cortex, which controls voluntary movements. The parietal lobe. The parietal lobe is the part of the brain located near the top at the back of the head behind the frontal lobe. It processes sensory information such as touch, temperature, and pain. It also plays a role in spatial awareness, perception, perception of stimuli, sorry, and integration of sensory information from various parts of the body. The occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is the region at the back of the brain that primarily processes visual information. It's responsible for interpreting and making sense of what we see, including recognizing shapes, colors, and motion. The temporal lobe. The temporal lobe is a region on the sides of the brain near the ears. It processes auditory information and it also, involved, it also involves memory, language comprehension, and some aspects of emotion and perception. Wernicke's area. Wernicke's area is a region in the left temporal lobe of the brain and is crucial for understanding and processing language. It helps in comprehending spoken and written language and damage to this area can result in difficulties with language comprehension and production. You will often see this show up in an MCQ. So that's good to know Wernicke's area is language. The Broca's area. Broca's area is a region in the left frontal lobe of the brain that is essential for speech production. It helps forming words and sentences by coordinating the movements of the mouth and tongue. Damage to the Broca's area can lead to difficulties in speaking fluently while comprehension of language remains intact. Motor cortex. The motor cortex is a region at the rear of the frontal lobes responsible for controlling voluntary movements by sending signals to muscles throughout the body. Somatosensory cortex. The somatosensory cortex is a brain area located in the parietal lobe that processes sensory information from the body, such as touch, temperature, and pain perception. It maps out where sensations are coming from on the body surface visual cortex. The visual cortex is part of the brain located in the occipital lobe. Remember, we talked about that had to do with vision that processes visual information received from the eyes. It helps interpret and make sense of what we see, including recognizing shapes, colors, and motion. Okay, so here's a little image of the anatomy of the brain. So we talked about the frontal lobe. We talked about the temporal lobe. We talked about the parietal lobe. We talked about the occipital lobe and the cerebellum. So take a moment now, pause it, and see if you can actually identify the function of each of those areas of the brain. Now here's another image where we talked about the prefrontal cortex, the hypothalamus, the uh, amygdala, the cerebellum and the hippocampus. See if you can identify the functions of each of those parts of the brain. Okay, so now let's break it all down. We're gonna begin with the, cere the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is the outermost layer of the brain and it's divided into two hemispheres, the left and the right. Each further divided into four lobes, frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital. Let's break those down. So let's look at the frontal lobe first. It's involved in executive functions such as decision-making, planning, reasoning, voluntary movement. It also houses the motor cortex, which controls voluntary muscle movements. Next, we have the parietal lobe. This processes sensory information from the body, including touch, temperature, and pain. It also plays a role in spatial awareness and perception. Next one, we have temporal lobe, sorry, temporal lobe, responsible for auditory processing, memory formation, and that includes the hippocampus, which is inside the temporal lobe, language comprehension, and emotion regulation. And lastly, the occipital lobe, primarily responsible for visual processing and interpreting visual information from the eyes. So how does that relate to behavioral and mental processes? Well, if you have any damage or dysfunction to these specific areas of the cerebral cortex, it can lead to impairments in the corresponding functions. So for example, 
If you have damage to the frontal lobe, this can affect your decision-making abilities and impulse control. There was a very famous case called the Phineas Gage case, and you probably learned this in psychology class. And if you haven't, look it up because it does sometimes come up on an MCQ or anything like that. Temporal lobe disorders can be can result in language difficulties or memory problems. So for example, if you have a patient with temporal lobe epilepsy, they may have problems with language and memory. And lastly, the parietal lobe damage, this can lead to sensory deficits or difficulties with spatial orientation. Okay, so the next system we're going to look at is the limbic system. So the limbic system includes structures like the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the hypothalamus, and they're situated deep in the brain. So let's start at looking at first the hippocampus. The hippocampus is crucial for forming and consolidating long-term memories, spatial navigation, and context-dependent learning. The amygdala is involved in processing emotions, particularly fear response and emotional memories. And the hypothalamus regulates the basic biological needs such as hunger, thirst, sleep, body temperature, and sexual behavior. It also controls the release of hormones from the pituitary gland. So how does that relate to behavioral and mental processes? The limbic system plays a critical role in emotional regulation, motivation, and memory formation. Dysfunction in the limbic system can lead to mood disorders, for example, depression, anxiety disorders, and disruptions in the memory process. So I have a little graph here, a little image of the limbic system. So have a look at this. I would say the most important things you really need to know is what's the function of the pineal gland, the hippocampus, the hypothalamus, the what else, anything in here, pretty much that's about it. So if you understand the function and how that plays in the limbic system, those are going to be good. Okay, now we're going to look at the brainstem and the cerebellum. So we're going to break down the structure first into the brainstem and the cerebellum. So let's look at brainstem. That connects the spinal cord to the brain and includes structures such as the medulla, pons, and reticular formation. Now, if you remember in the earlier slides, we actually went through all the functions of these things. So you probably already have these in your notes. It regulates basic functions necessary for survival, including the heartbeat, breathing, and reflexive responses. Now let's look at the structure of the cerebellum. That's located at the back of the brainstem and the cerebellum coordinates voluntary movements, balance, and posture. Now let's look at the functions. Okay, so the function of the brainstem is it controls vital functions such as heart rate, breathing, and digestion. And it also plays a role in the sleep-wake cycles and arousal. The cerebellum coordinates motor movements, maintaining posture and balance, and contributing to procedural memories, so your skills and your habits. How does that relate to behavioral and mental processes? Well, if you, damage, if you have damage to the brainstem, it can lead to life-threatening conditions because of its role in regulating the bodily functions. So dysfunction in the cerebellum can result in motor coordination defic deficiencies and impairments in balance and posture. Okay, here's a little image again of the, the location of the midbrain, the pons, the medulla, the basilary, the basilar artery, and the vertebral arteries. Okay, now we're going to look at neuroplasticity and brain development. So let's look at neuroplasticity first. Neuroplasticity refers to the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout life in response to experience, learning, injury, everything that's happening. It's those firing of those neurons that we talked about in 1.3, okay? The developmental changes, well, the brain undergoes significant changes throughout development with different regions maturing at different rates. This influences cognitive abilities, emotional regulation, and social behaviors across the lifespan. And how does that relate to behavioral and mental process? Because remember, that's our CED question, right? Neuroplasticity allows for adaptive changes in response to environmental demands and experiences. Brain development influences our learning abilities, our language acquisition, our social skills development, and our resilience to stress. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the applications to behavior and mental processes. Again, that was part of that CED question. So let's talk about this. We're going to talk about learning and memory. Well, brain structures like the hippocampus and cerebral cortex are critical for learning new information and forming memories. Emotional regulation. The limbic system, including the amygdala and the hypothalamus, play key roles in processing emotions and regulating emotional response motor skills and coordination, the cerebral and the motor cortex are essential for coordinating your voluntary movements and maintaining your motor skills. 
language and communication. Language processing involves multiple brain areas, including parts of the frontal and temporal lobes. And lastly, problem solving and decision making. Higher cognitive functions such as reasoning and problem solving rely on the integration of information across multiple brain regions, especially in the frontal lobes. Okay, so the structure and function of the brain are intricately linked to behavior and, and mental processes and how we understand how those different brain regions work and how they contribute to these processes will help psychologists explain different behaviors, cognitive abilities, emotional responses, and neurological disorders. Okay, so thanks for listening. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more AP psychology content. Check out my link below to my Teacher Pay Teacher store if you want the full slideshow and the workbook to go along with it. See you next time.